Hey, friends, uh, good day. It's Bill Press here with the Young Turks Network, standing in front of the White House. I just left the White House briefing room and the briefing today with Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders. This has to be one of the most earth-shaking days yet of the Trump administration. In fact, I would say it could be the beginning of the end of the Trump administration. I'm going to be joined uh, soon by Ryan Grimm, also with the Young Turks Network and from The Intercept, be coming along shortly. So um, a little background, uh, at least to start with. You know, for the last uh, 10 months, Donald Trump has been doing everything he can to undermine the Russian investigation. He calls it a witch hunt. He says it's fake news. He says it's all started by Democrats who can't accept the fact that Hillary Clinton uh, is our, uh, lost the election. Uh, he begged James Comey to end the investigation when Comey refused. He fired James Comey, uh, and he still said again there was nothing to it. There's this a big nothing burger. And speaking of Ryan Grimm, <laughs> this morning Robert Mueller, in effect, called Donald Trump a liar. He said, "No, no, no. This is a serious investigation. There's been some serious shit going on. We're getting to the bottom of it." Uh, and he filed charges against two top Trump campaign aides, his camp former campaign manager Paul Manafort, and a form, uh, Manafort's business partner, uh, Rick Gates, uh, on 12 charges of uh, taking money, millions and millions of dollars, from a Ukrainian businessman who's very close to the Kremlin and then lying about it and trying to launder that money and hiding it. They were charged with 12 counts, including conspiracy against the United States. And maybe more importantly, yeah. a Trump campaign aide by the name of George Papandopoulos, it was revealed today, he pled guilty to lying to the FBI about all the efforts he was making in the Trump campaign to set up meetings with Russian operatives who allegedly had dirt on Hillary Clinton. Yeah. So that's the bombshell news that broke this morning. We go to the briefing room this afternoon, and Sarah Huckabee Sanders says this has nothing to do with us, nothing to do with Donald Trump. Nothing to do with the campaign, which I'm sorry, Ryan, is pure, unadulterated horseshit. They worked, all three of them worked for the campaign. Donald, I mean, and Paul. Gates stuck around. Manafort was the campaign manager and then he left. Gates stuck around. Papandopoulos was with the campaign, was talking to this guy, Sam Clovis. We saw him on television all the time about setting up meetings. He was in touch with a professor who said, let's set up some meetings. He even talked about setting up a meeting with Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin because he said they could bring dirt on Hillary, including copies of her emails, which means they already knew they were hacking into the Clinton campaign. Yeah. And Huckabee Sanders had the audacity today, of course she was ordered to do it by Trump, but she agreed to do it, to come out and say it has nothing to do with us. Oh yes, it does. Uh, this is a big deal, as Joe Biden would say, uh, a BFD. I'll be careful about using that word. What do you think? Yeah, she said, she said uh, uh, he's just a campaign volunteer, right? You know, he's just some guy whose ideas were rebuffed and ignored. Earlier, I think it was Sean Spicer uh, who was saying, well, Paul Manafort, the guy barely did anything on the campaign. Right. Other than be campaign manager. <laughs> Like beyond that. And then what I was saying about Rick Gates. So he's kind of like Manafort's man uh, wherever he goes. And Rick Gates stayed at the campaign. There was this uh, report that came out that said Manafort had been had gotten $12 million off the books from these Ukrainian oligarchs. And as a result, he kind of was pushed out because, you know, and he was losing an internal struggle. And the and they kind of you it's not it's not as if, oh, my goodness. Uh, Paul Manafort engaged in outrageous behavior overseas. It was more like, okay, we can use this report to push him out. So they push him out. But Rick Gates stayed in, and Rick Gates is the conduit through every, for everything that Manafort was was trying to accomplish. And you, so then you have that June 9th, you know, much discussed meeting between Donald Trump Jr., Paul Manafort, Jared Kushner, and the the Russian yeah. lawyer, who we've now learned was had talking points from the Russian government. Uh, and had you know, extensive contacts with the Russian government um, before she came to this meeting and talked about, and you know offered things, uh, emails and other dirt. And uh, Donald Trump said, "Great, love it, right. you know, absolutely yeah. love it." Uh, and then we have maybe a parallel thing here going on with Papadopoulos that we're now finding out this guy has rolled, and his lawyer said, 
in a statement that looked like it was written by Mueller, uh, we can't wait for George to have the opportunity when called on by the court to reveal all the details of his story. Right. Like, Ooh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. and meanwhile, uh, the Trump White House, um, with the cooperation, the full cooperation of the disgraced Congressman Devin Nunez, who had to retire or step aside as head of the House Investigative Intelligence Committee, uh, the Intelligence Committee, because he was such a puppet of Donald Trump, Nunez now has launched a two, tried last week, I guess he may still go forward, to two investigations trying to change the subject and to get people to focus on Hillary instead of Donald Trump talking about this old uranium deal, which has been totally discredited, uh, and also talking about the fact that during the general election campaign, Democrats paid for opposition research against Donald Trump. Shocking. They, they, they continued the same re firm that had been hired by right-wing anti-Trump Republicans during the primary to find out dirt. So they're trying to pursue that. And again, the White House saying today, uh, we should be talking about Hillary, not, uh, not about Donald Trump. No, no, no. Donald Trump is the president. Paul Manafort worked for Donald Trump. Rick Gates worked for Donald Trump. George Papadopoulos worked for Donald Trump. And I guess one final thing I would say about this, Ryan, is, again, this... What Mueller did today proves that this is a serious investigation into serious charges by a serious special prosecutor, Robert Mueller. And Donald Trump has to know this is not the end of the road. This is the first in what I think is going to be a wave of invest, a continuing investigation, and there will be more indictments. And I think the more indictments are going to get from the campaign into the White House and maybe all the way to the Oval Office. Right. And I think you do you do Manafort first because well, a apparently there were some uh, statute of limitations issues coming up with some of the laundering that was going on. So you had to move on Manafort quickly. Uh, but if you're going to charge people for things like a FARA violation, which is not lobbying, I mean not registering to lobby for a foreign principal, uh, or this or money laundering, uh, Jared Kushner all of a sudden has much more expensive legal bills. Uh, this is a guy who um, did not disclose on a lot of his on, on his uh, forms to get a security clearance a lot of different meetings that he had with uh, with Russian agents. Well, we, we, so we know I that. think three times right. he failed to report yeah. these far meetings with foreign officials. Right. And so if you're willing to hit uh, this kid Papadopoulos for lying and you're going to hit uh, Manafort for his foreign lobbying paperwork, and it looks like you're going to hit Tony Podesta. So Tony Podesta, this morning, he's John Podesta's brother, coincidentally, but they're kind of like mirror images of each other, and it's almost it's like Shakespearean that they're both caught up in in this. Uh, Tony Podesta this morning told his uh, staff at the Podesta Group that he's resigning. Uh, he's going to step aside, and he said, "I'm going to fight this fight individually, and I don't want it to drag down all of the rest of you." So what is what fight is he fighting? Clearly that. He's confirming there that the feds are coming after him because he was he's named as either uh, lobbying shop A or B in the Paul Manafort indictment. Manafort was using the Podesta group to lobby on behalf. So right. so you've got another that's another person that, uh, you know, that that's powerful and it's caught up in this. So Kushner, ju just for those violations alone, if if Mueller wants to and it looks like Mueller does want to, you know, ha has leverage on Kushner as well. Right. No, I think the people that have to be nervous today are Jared Kushner, uh, Donald Trump Jr., uh, and Michael Flynn, by the way. Let's, oh, yeah. uh, uh, let's uh, not forget him. Manafort's clients in the Ukraine were pro-Russian political parties and business leaders who had many, many contacts in the Kremlin. So there still is a question about, and by the way, this was between 2009 and 2016. Right. So in 2016, Manafort is already a part of that year at least, working for Donald Trump, did he use his contacts from the Ukraine to try to reach out to the Russians to get some help for Donald Trump or to help them hack? And that, that's still an open question. Donald Trump has tweeted again this morning, no collusion. That's not what we learned this morning. We learned that George Papanopoulos, campaign aide, foreign policy advisor to Donald Trump, was using his connections to try to line up meetings, maybe even a meeting with Trump and Putin, but meetings between Kremlin operatives who had dirt on Hillary Clinton, 
to meet with the Trump campaign officials, including emails. That is collusion. So whether it happened or not, he was attempting to collude. Right, right yeah. And, and Sarah Sanders' best defense is we ignored his suggestions and he's a nobody. That, I mean, there's a, the one reason she would say that's the best you can do. Let's go back to just what it says in the indictment for a second. Um, which, the, which one? Well, the, against Manafort and okay. Gates. So it's, as Trump points out in his tweeting, that this, these are events that took place before Manafort and Gates went to work for Trump. And it has to do with money laundering. Now, is he trying to launder money because it's illegal money that he, sh that he, he shouldn't have earned and get in trouble? Or is it because he just didn't want to pay taxes on it? Well, two, you're right, I'd say there's two, two answers to that. One, okay, one, some of it is illegal in the sense that it was money for, that we've now determined is illegal because it was money from Ukraine to Manafort and Gates for lobbying. Uh, and he didn't want to... Not report it. Not rep and he didn't report the lobbying. So that, the not reporting the lobbying would, would be illegal. Otherwise, we're talking about just the basic tax violation uh, and the, yes. way that the, the way that the money laundering scheme works. And Dave Dayen for The Intercept actually kind of broke this in February by just uh, noticing a bunch of uh, real estate transactions that, that only make sense through the lens of money laundering. And the basic scheme, which the Justice Department, uh, Treasury Department, I'm sorry, recently said that 30% of high-priced properties in Manhattan were the result of suspicious activity. 30%. Uh, and so here's the suspicious acti activity that unfolds. You set up a little company offshore, let's say somewhere in the Bahamas or Seychelles or elsewhere. You call it uh, Manafort's Money LLC. Money that comes from Ukraine, you stick into this right. company in the Bahamas. The company in the Bahamas then buys a, t a $3 million condo in the Trump Tower. So it's the owner, and this happened. So it's yeah. the owner then, free and clear of this property. You then take that property to a normal bank or actually some shady banks as well, but preferably you take it to like a city bank uh, and you say, hey, look, I've got this $3 million property. I have no debt on it. I want to refinance it. Uh, give me a $3 million loan. Bank says, of course, the collateral is the property. Here's your $3 million loan. Boom, you now have $3 million cash that you can spend uh, and you paid no taxes on it. Yeah, uh, and just a postscript on that. I don't buy the line that this was all over and done with before uh, before Paul Manafort went to work for Donald Trump. Well, he, he almost literally Ukraine. walks out of the Ukraine deal for which he made million, tens of millions of dollars and walks into Donald Trump's office. You cannot tell me that he didn't continue to keep in touch with his Ukrainian Russian clients for help in that campaign. Right. And, and would, that yeah. that hasn't been well we don't know whether Mueller has explored that yet, but this is not part of this indictment. There could be more. Right. And I, I would say, if, if, if there was sort of the, or the last thing that ever came up, and we never had the Papadopoulos thing this morning, and you know, if yeah. if Mueller did a year's worth of investigation, and he nailed Paul Manafort and Rick Gates on money laundering and not registering as foreign lobbyists, bogus, nothing burger. Like, yeah. I mean, sure, put them away if yeah. you know right. they committed crimes, but it, they didn't. They didn't tilt the election. You know, we're like. Uh, it, this isn't like a, a world historic geopolitical event. What this is, is uh, is Mueller attempting to get leverage on somebody who will then talk so that they don't exactly. die, die old men in prison. That's the way all, that's the way all of these investigations work. And I, I said this earlier, maybe you weren't here yet. This is not the end of the road. Sarah Huckabee Sanders today said they have indications that Mueller is nearing the end of his investigation. You know what? They're living on <laughs> Jupiter. I mean, that's that's total baloney. There's no indication of that. In fact, every indication of just the opposite. Mueller has hired a Cracker Jack staff, and they're in for the long haul. And he's, he's and, working fast. And they usually start with a few fish. Manafort's a big fish, not necessarily a little fish. And they keep working up the chain. The point I'd love to make is on Jeff Sessions. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. boy, Jeff Sessions. He may wind up regretting this uh, kind of uh, draconian mandatory minimum policy that he reinstituted. <laughs> this is a guy who uh, multiple times uh, denied ever having any contacts with any Russians, then had to amend that, he made under oath, yeah. because he actually met with uh, Sergei Kislyak a couple times. But he said, we only talked about Ukraine and other foreign policy issues. 
Now it has emerged that, in fact, Kislyak told his superiors back in Moscow that they talked about the 2016 campaign. Yeah, yeah. Now it has emerged that Papadopoulos, who was a foreign policy advisor, which is basically working under Sessions yeah. in the Trump campaign, yeah. Yeah. is ready to sing. Yeah. What, what did George tell Jeff about what he knew? Because Jeff was head of this committee that Papadopoulos was a member of. If George was furiously telling everybody in the senior ranks of the campaign that the Russians had this dirt and we ought to make these meetings, what are the chances that he did not tell Sessions? Uh, by the way, in terms of We're regretting so things, I'm just going to make final Bill point. pretty late. I know, I'm going to be really <laughs> late. But the person who really should be regretting something today is Donald Trump. Remember, the only reason we have Robert Mueller and yes. a special investigation is because Donald Trump made the unbelievably stupid mistake of firing James Comey. Yeah, and, li right. and listening uh, to Jared Kushner. And listening to Jared Kushner. And so mm -hmm. there you are, man. Yeah. It's a self-inflicted wound, a big time. Yep. See you, man. I see it.